Hello friends, let's discuss current affairs and uh, the question that we want to start with is uh, about the national highway or an expressway that India is building uh, on its um, east. Now this expressway which is called the India Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway, IMT Highway is going to connect uh, the, not just these three countries but the plan is to connect um, India with Vietnam which is quite far from where you know the road ends actually. Now Thailand, you have Thailand, okay, you go further east, you have Cambodia, above it is Laos and further down there is Vietnam, which is on the Pacific coast. So the goal is to ultimately link India with Thailand, which we would call the East, um, Eastern Economic Corridor, basically, okay. Now, I, or rather you could call it the East-West Economic Corridor. Now, um, to talk about this specific highway, this is about 13, 16, 13, 16 kilometers long. So this would start in, uh, you know, uh, More in Mina, Manipur, this is Mizoram, Tripura, okay, these are all Assam here, this is Nagaland, this is Manipur, okay. Now this is Arunachal Pradesh as we all know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Manipur and in Manipur you would find More, which is kind of a border check post uh, town. So from More, the highway would start to go to Mandalay, Naipita, Naipita, some places you will find instead of a T, a D, which is Naipita, which is the capital of Myanmar. Uh, this is the old uh, capital of uh, Myanmar, Yangon, previously called Rangoon. And from there, this also Rangoon is also the commercial center as well as the largest city in Myanmar. Now from there it would go to Masoth. Masoth is in Thailand. From there the idea is to connect it to Bangkok and from Bangkok to Cambodia's um, capital Phen. From Phen from Nam Phen to you know Ho Chi Minh city which is the biggest city in Vietnam. From up there to Hanoi which is in the north and the capital of uh, Vietnam. Now. You know, uh, this is a long highway. The idea is to connect to India with Vietnam and improve uh, ASEAN India free trade. The tree free trade between ASEAN, as you know, ASEAN is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Okay, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Okay. It has 10 countries. So India is not a member. So India plus ASEAN is the deal here. I mean, we want to improve our trade relations with uh, these countries, export more, deepen our relationship. The deeper the economic relationship is, the better are the chances of a, you know, a better relationship in every other realm, especially political. So, uh, 13, 60 kilometer long as of today from Moore to, you know, my south in, uh, you know, uh, Thailand. Let me take you to something more. As I mentioned, we have the idea is to, you know, connect India with Vietnam. That, ladies and gentlemen, would be a 3,200 kilometer stretch. 3,200 kilometers is considerably longer than this particular stretch. Okay. So, now, this is where you have my Bangladesh. Okay. Now, Bangladesh is, we also want to become a part of this. So, you know, from here, the, this is Agartala, you'll find Agartala here, Agartala to More and, uh, you know, that's what they want to connect basically. On some places they say that we have Chittagong port, from Chittagong we can connect like this also. Let's see how it works out. As of today, they have, you know, so, you know, they have mentioned, uh, uh, they have shown an abiding interest, sustaining interest. Let's see how it actually works basically because all these are strategic relationships and uh, Myanmar today is run by a military government. Uh, the military government is, um, you know, waging a, a major uh, war against, um, um, you know, the major war in the Rakhine province, which is home to El this is H I N E, Rakhine province, which is home to, you know, a, a large number of uh, Muslim community. Um, I'll not get into this uh, because I've written extensively on this, but um, you know, civil war apart, 
there is this um, you know tussle political tussle between Myanmar and Bangladesh over this particular you know civil war because a lot of people escaping the civil war are fleeing into Bangladesh and that has put considerable pressure on the economic uh, resources in Bangladesh okay so um, but I did not mention about anything about the civil war in Myanmar because that is for some other time okay we'll discuss it some other time so let me tell you a bit about Myanmar the ruler here is uh, this is the capital you can write it here uh, this is you can locate it here it's a planned city it's in the middle of a jungle now why was this city adopted uh, and Rangoon abandoned as a capital see uh, there is in military between let me tell you a story general ne Pin. this guy ruled burma between 1962 to 2000 you could say 11 okay um, for a long time these guys ran the show and the military government in this place was led by ne Win. he was a highly superstitious man highly superstitious man and he his favorite number was nine, number nine. And someone said that his astrologers told him that um, you know this uh, there could be an attack on Yangoon, so you need to move your capital up because if there is an attack on Yangoon and you do not, since you do not have the military wherewithal to defend yourself against a major attack by let's say a, an adversary like the U.S., so we suggest you move your capital up the up into the center of the country and uh, you know. This is why Naipitaw was selected. Naipitaw was built primarily as a new capital because of the superstitious nature and um, belief in astrology. I'm not saying astrology is superstition. I'm saying superstitious nature and belief in astrology that pushed the military government to move the capital. Okay. So currently, uh, this is the old guy. He is dead, of course. And currently, the, the, the ruler is a guy called General... Min Liang Ong, but you write this, this should be sufficient. Three names, three words in a name are difficult to remember, two are okay. Hmm? So, uh, from Myanmar, yeah, if you want to know the, the currency of Myanmar, it is a uh, cat. Thailand's king is Mahavajira Long Kong. Maha Vajira Long Kong. It's one word. Okay. Maha Vajira Long Kong is a king here, and the currency is the Bhat B A H T B A H T. The capital of Manipur is Imphal. Manipur is burning now. And the chief priest is Biren Singh. Biren Singh. Tripura's capital is Agartala. It's on the Bangladesh border. And the chief priest is Dr. Manik Saha. Manik Saha. Mizoram, the capital is Aizal. And the chief minister is Zaram Thanga. Meghalay, Shillong is the capital and the chief minister is Conrad Sangma, C-O-N, I'll write it here, R-A-D, Conrad Sangma, okay, and um, you have Sikkim, it's not there in the map here, Sikkim's capital is Gangtok, And the chief minister is Prem Singh Gole or Prem Singh Tamang, both are fine. Prem Singh Gole. Which is the first country outside the US to acquire a third squadron of F-35 stealth fighter jets in a deal worth $3 billion. There are a lot of countries that own F-35 stealth fighter jets, but Israel has become the first one to have a third squadron. Okay. Now, the F-35 is a stealth fighter, um, a combat aircraft, which effectively means it cannot be detected, detected by a radar. 
um it's made by a company called lockheed martin lockheed martin lockheed martin is headquartered in a place called bethista bethista which is in the american state of maryland yeah maryland and um, it's ceo is james Teklet. James Teklet. It has been pretty expensive. The first time this plane was brought in, you know, unveiled was in 2006. But uh, the eventual induction happened in 2015. And uh, only the US has had all the A Naval, Air Force and Army versions. But other countries have only the Air Force versions. Now, um, this Lockheed Martin is a major company. Many of us would say, how big could a defense company be? It is three times the size of TCS. It's, that would make it $66 billion company. Mm, not a lot of money there. Okay. Uh, now how much would a plane cost? A fighter jet like the F-35 would cost 850 crore rupees, 100 million dollars per piece, one aircraft. Okay, yeah. this is a shell aircraft without weapons. Please know that without weapons. Our uh, capital of Israel would be Jerusalem. The prime minister is Benjamin Netanyahu. France, we all know Paris is the capital. Emmanuel Macron is the president. Emmanuel Macron. Then Canada. Ottawa is the capital. Prime Minister is a guy called Justin Trudeau. India, no, let's not discuss this because we all are familiar with the capital. New Delhi and the Prime Minister of our country is Narendra Modi. South Korea's um, capital is Seoul and the President is Yuk Seoul. I'm so sorry. Okay. Suk. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yol. Suk Yol Son. Suk Yol Son. They are all covered. In some places you will find. Okay. You will find it as a soon. This coming in first and this coming in last. These are, you know, these South Korean names are a bit tough. In fact, you will find some names like uh, Bin He with a cap hyphenated, you know, small letter, second one. Ajit Bawa, who recently took oath as the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra for a record fifth time, belongs to the Nationalist Congress Party. Oh, there's been a major drama in, the, in Maharashtra. So let's not get into the drama. Let's look at what is he, you know, a, you know, a member of Nationalist Congress Party. The Nationalist Congress Party more or less split it into, you know, Ajit Pawar group and Sharad Pawar group. So Ajit Pawar is a son of Sharad Pawar's elder brother. Elder brother. So he's a nephew. Uh, nephew. How do you pronounce it? Nephew. Not nephew. You could call it nephew, no harm, but nephew is the right pronunciation. Okay, so um, as of today, which party in Maharashtra is in power? It's a coalition. You have the Bharatiya Janta Party with 105 seats. Then Shiv Sena of what is called the HRSHS. Shiv Sena, um, you know, they say that we are the true Shiv Sena. So, you know, um, this party has, I think, 40 seats. Yeah, 40. And Ajit Pawar's Nationalist Congress Party has about 30 seats. 
okay so totally maharashtra assembly has 288 assembly seats 288 assembly seats so these guys have a majority a cool majority okay with 140 also they had a majority even now 30 coming in from the nationalist congress party led by ajit power they have cool numbers now uh, the these two parties had split so Uddhav Thakre's party has uh, you know 17 seats uh, 18 17 seats I'm sorry 17 seats uh, nationalist congress party the number of members with um, uh, Sharad power is 18 what is it 18 so that's that's uh, now these are the numbers my friends the congress party has 45 With which company did the defense ministry sign a contract worth 27.25 crore for the medium refit with the uh, life certification of submarine INS Shankush? Uh, INS is, um, yeah, I'm not going to discuss the question, but I'm going to tell you a little. Indian naval ship, and this belongs to the Shishumar, Shishumar class of diesel electric submarines diesel electric submarines built by Germany in 1984 83 84 yeah 84 so Shishumar class of diesel electric power sub, uh, powered submarines so were manufactured by Germany. We bought these from Germany and that was in 1984. But we have four. These four, you know, the Shishumar class has four. One is Shishumar itself. Okay, Shishumar one. Two is this one. I know this is Shankush. Okay. Uh, three is um, Shalki. INS Shalki and the fourth one is Shankul INS Shankul INS Shankul Chala. who has been reappointed as Solicitor General of India for a term of three years this is Tushar Mehta Tushar Mehta was a practicing lawyer, then you know, a senior advocate appointed by the Gujarat High Court, and then uh, you know, he became the additional solicitor general. Now he's a solicitor general. Who is a solicitor general? The SG assists the AG. AG for India is the Attorney General. That is the Attorney General for India, highest legal officer of India. Attorney General officer is highest legal officer or law officer of the government of India of government of India fair this is a constitutional post AG's post is constitutional post this comes under article 76 article 76 of the constitution of India and this guy is appointed by the president the president on recommendation of course of the president prime minister of india uh, you know who leads the council of ministers so highest um, legal officer of the government of india is the ag attorney general for india um, the position of ag is constitutional but statutory uh, sorry uh, solicitor general position is not a constitutional position it is established by law so it's a statutory post statutory post okay statutory post and um, you know is the second highest legal officer second highest legal officer second highest legal officer of the government of india this is tushar mehta and um, who is the ag of india current ag is r venkataramani R. Venkatramani. That should be it. Hmm? The rest are not important. 
who is the first public sorry which is the first public sector bank to officially launch the mahila samman savings uh, certificate 2023 at all its branches bank of india not much to discuss here bank of india is led by rajnish karnatak the ceo of the bank is rajnish karnatak punjab national bank ceo is atul kumar goel state bank of india dinesh khara bank of baroda has a new ceo devadatta chand okay canara bank canara bank is head, headed by k satyanarayana raju satyanarayana raju Okay. Now the following javelin throwers clinched the Lausanne Diamond League 2023 title with the best throw of 87.66 meters. That's Neeraj Chopra of India. Neeraj uh, is a world champion. Is the current world silver medalist, world silver medalist, Olympic gold medalist. Okay, and um, I think he was the first Asian. Uh, javelin to win first asian male athlete to win javelin gold first asian male athlete to win javelin gold he is um, there is a video i watched of his extreme hard work the kind of practice he puts in everything he deserves every bit of success he gets yeah Who is the new chief selector, national selector of the BCCI selection panel for the men's cricket team? What is BCCI? The Board of Control for Cricket in India. The Board of Control for Cricket in India. Okay. Now this is Ajit Agarkar. Ajit Agarkar um, was a bowler for India. At one point, uh, he held the record for the maximum number of ducks, maximum maximum number of consecutive ducks, I think. Anyway, uh, not being a batsman is, um, you know, what makes him, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was not a great batsman, but he was a very good bowler. Anyway, let, to take it further, the BCCI was started in 1928. You know that? 1928. It's a private body. It's not run by the government of India. It's a private body. So technically speaking, these players represent not India, but BCCI. Though, of course, they represent India. um it, it's um what is it headquartered in mumbai its president is a guy called uh, roger binni roger binni roger was a medium pace bowler who played a great role in india's 1983 world cup victory okay so roger binni and then we have uh, the ceo this is a ceo this is a president ceo is hemang i mean hemang i mean yeah fair do you know the oldest cricket club in india was started in calcutta in calcutta it was called the calcutta cricket club Calcutta Cricket Club, not 1762, 1792. I'm sorry, 30 years. We went back. Which city hosted the national international conference on green hydrogen in July 2023? That would be New Delhi. But we have choices like Stockholm. This is Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. Okay. Um, the chief minister of sorry, the prime minister of Sweden is a guy called. Uh, guy uh, named ulf christerson christ sen lisbon the capital of portugal you can see this in the iberian peninsula okay portugal um, this is the capital of portugal and the chief minister of, again i i think i am making this 
I don't know, the chief minister has got into my mind. You know? the, um, the president of Portugal is Rebelo Marcelo de Sousa. De Sousa. This is Iceland. This is the capital of, uh, this is uh, Reykjavik, is the capital of uh, Iceland. And it's run by Prime Minister Katrin Jacobs Dottir. Jacobs Dottir. Hmm. Okay. This is Dublin. Dublin is even here. Yeah. This is called, this is the, the island of Ireland. But in green, you see the Republic of Ireland, by the northern port portion called Northern Ireland is a part of the UK, part of the UK. So this is the capital of Ireland and its prime minister is a guy called Leo Varadkar. Leo Varadkar. Let me clear this and tell you more, something more. See these four countries, Norway, Sweden, okay, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. These four countries are together called Scandinavia. Scandinavia, okay, these four countries. Now, when we add Iceland to Scandinavian countries, we may get, so Scandinavia plus Iceland, we get Nordic countries, what is it? Nordic countries. Fair, I just want to tell you, I saw the map, so, and I love maps, amazing stuff they are. Which nation won the men's Asian Kabaddi Championship. This was held in Busan. B-U-S-A-N. This is the place called Busan. So, venue, you could write venue, Busan in South Korea. Busan, South Korea. Winner, India. Runner-up, Iran. Runner-up, Iran. Okay. I think Busan is the second biggest city in uh, South Korea. See, so this is Vladivostok. This is said to be the only ice-free port in the whole of Soviet Russia. Soviet, uh, sorry, not Soviet Russia. In the whole of Russia. Because north of Russia, the northern part of Russia is all ice, you know. And, you know, it's frozen. The coastline is frozen for most of the year, actually. Okay. So, you have from Lodi Vostok to Moscow, there is a train, okay, it takes about, uh, you know, five, five, sorry, eight days, five hours, 48 minutes, okay, you want to travel, you could do this, anyway, this is Hong Kong, this is a SAR, Hong Kong SAR, Macau SAR, SAR stands for Special Autonomous Region, okay, uh, special administrative region. I'm so sorry. Special administrative region. Special administrative region. So, you see this. Hong Kong was run by Britain for 99 years between 1898 to 1997. Macau for 442 years. It was ruled by Portugal. It was ruled by Portugal. Hmm. India observes National Doctors' Day on 1st July every year to pay a tribute to Dr. Midan Chandra Roy. Identify the correct tribute symbol. Dr. Roy was the Chief Minister of West Bengal between 1948 and 1962. Um, you know, he was just before um, you know his death in 1962. 
he received the bharat ratna that was a year before 1961 he received the bharat ratna and um, his birthday i think it is yeah 1st july 1882 he was born on 18 1st july 1882 this is observed as the national doctors day of india fair now he was an frcp if i'm not wrong fellow of the royal college of his um, physicians and he was also no he was a surgeon frcs fellow of the royal college of surgeons and he was an mrcp which is the fellow of the royal college of physicians so member this is member this is fellow fellow of the royal college of surgeons and member of the royal college of physicians fair yeah. now in his name there is a particular award called the dr b c roy award dr b c roy award is the highest award in the world of medicine in india the highest award given to any doctor is the dr bidan chandra roy award b c roy award okay that's about him so just a second please uh the 17th indian cooperative congress was held in uh, well it was held in new delhi not much to discuss but we could do one thing we could take the names of some organization in each of these places if not each at least two three places like i am amdavad you have the physic you know um physical research lab okay prl physical research lab then pune is home to the national film archives national research center for citrus hyderabad center for cellular and molecular biology center for cellular and molecular biology center for cellular molecular biology the 6g six generation of telecom tele uh, no telecommunications technology uh six generation vision framework was officially approved by the international telecommunications union which is headquartered in geneva let's stick to only headquarters this time around okay geneva hague is home to the international court of justice the international court of justice this is one of the six organs of the un one of the six organs of the un and the only un organ you know whose head office is beyond new york is outside new york you have six organs now you have general assembly you have the united nations security council so one two you have the trusteeship council you have the economic and social council ecosoc okay um yeah what else is there suddenly i forgot <laughs> i'll get back to this yeah um you know when we look at the un it is um, you know it's headquartered most of its bodies are headquartered in uh, you know principal organs are headquartered in new york city but it has a lot of specialized agencies the itu is one of the it is a specialized agency of the un of the un now let me tell you something more um, madrid world tourism organization world tourism organization world tourism organization okay addis ababa is in uh, it's a capital of ethiopia it is home to african union african union african union african union 
Okay. So, African Union. Let's go a little past this and let's look at something more. Montreal. Montreal is home to the International Civil Aviation Organization. The International Civil Aviation Organization. Okay. International Civil Aviation Organization. All UN bodies except the African Union of Goods. Okay. So let's go a little past this and let's look at something more now. Uh, this particular Vitasta program, Vitasta is the river. Vitasta is the river. In fact, the old name of a river. Which state connected the Vitasta program with the aim of spreading its diverse art, culture, literature, art, um, you know, craft and cuisine? Jammu and Kashmir. It's a union territory now. And, um, you know, its governor is, uh, it's one of the few places which has two capitals. One is Jammu, the other is Srinagar. Srinagar is said to be the summer capital. Jammu is a winter capital. And, uh, its lieutenant governor LG is a guy called Manoj Sinha. Sinha. Ladakh's Le, that's the capital, and the LG is BD Mishra, retired commander, uh, retired commander, I guess, yeah, uh, or commodore BD Mishra. Haryana, Manohar Lal Khattar, Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand is Pushkar Singh Dhami, Pushkar Singh Dhami, Sikkim, a while ago we mentioned his name, P.S. Gole. P.S. Gole. No, we discussed. Oh, I went up. Right. Anyway, hey, hey, hey. I was talking about the fifth order. <laughs> I don't know why it escaped my mind. It's a secretariat. This is where, which is the office of the UN Secretary, Secretary General, who is currently Antonio Guterres. Antonio Guterres is a Portuguese official. Portugal, he's from Portugal. Okay. Sometimes, you know, it does happen that uh, most of us forget those pretty familiar things, actually. Okay. Which is pretty normal thing. Please remember. Sometimes in the rush of things, we, you know, because we have a lot to share, you may forget certain things in the exam itself, which is pretty normal thing. Okay. But at that time, just leave it, go to the next question, and maybe you could come back to that when you write. Okay. How many critical minerals are that are essential for the economic development and national security of our country were identified with the central government? 30. And I went through the report of the committee that, you know, on national security, this in identifying such minerals, and I found these names, all these 30. Fair. Uh, in fact, they did not have full forms of PGE and RE, -E, but I mentioned here platinum group elements, rare earth elements, and everything. So, all of these things are pretty important. And where are they used? Typically, in industries that are highly critical to our national security or economic development, like pharmaceuticals, pharma, defense, telecom, energy, see the pretty important things. Okay, very, very important things. So, let's go past this. By collaborating with which Indian automobile company did Harley Davidson introduce their co developed premium motorcycle, the Harley Davidson X440 in India? Hero Motor Corp, run by Pawan Munjal. Pawan Munjal. Only here I'll mention this. Pawan Munjal. 
the Munjal family owns the hero group. Okay, and Harley Davidson, my friends, is an American automobile company considered the most popular two-wheeler brand in the world. I mean, it's a yoke kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's headquartered in Wisconsin. Okay, if you want the city's name, I can give you that as well. Milwaukee. This is the name of the town in the American state of Wisconsin, which is you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the United States. Its CEO is a guy called Joken Zaitz. Okay, Zaitz. Under which scheme will the center help and provide support to minor rape survivors who are abandoned by the family often due to pregnancy? This is such a sad thing in India for no fault of the victim, the family, the friends, society abandoning such victims. And it only reflects on how ugly our society is. We may talk about moral values, you know, but unfortunately, this is how we treat our, you know, our girl children. Vatsali is a scheme, my friends, and um, this is a centrally sponsored scheme under which the funds would be, you know, spent in the ratio of 60% of the funds would come from center and 40% from the state. Now, this, why this is a centrally sponsored scheme and this is the funding pattern, some, you know, in the case of northeastern states northeastern states plus jammu and kashmir unitary of jnk uttarakhand and himachal pradesh the funding will be 90 is to 10 90 is to 10 where 90 percent of the funds required to meet expenses under this scheme will come from central government 10 would come from the state government now the unit that means local government Okay, and the scheme, special children, children with special needs, uh, someone with lower IQ and all, or physical, you know, you know uh, disability, um, the young as they are called, um, differently able children, sometimes mentally, intellectually different, you know, and, you know, uh, different children. So special needs children will get um, in separate homes where their needs will be taken care of in a better way. Um, the, the government is also sponsoring a cradle reception scheme in each, you know, at least one household, uh, one uh, adoption center, or one orphanage in some places, you know, children's home. There will be a cradle, you know, uh, what we call a reception center, which will bear the baby if the mother does not want the child, you know, newborn child mother could leave the child there rather than abandon on the streets and anything else. Yeah. See, in India, I know it's it's a very strong opinion, but most of you would agree with me that the greater stigma is not to the rapist, but the victim. You know, there's a greater stigma attached to the victim, you know, who's been, who has faced the crime, who has suffered the crime, uh, who suffered physical emotional trauma but the rapist is more or less not looked at in the same way you know, the stigma is unfortunately not there yeah. according to bloomberg which is the world's largest bank in equity market capitalization as on 1st july 2023 what is market capitalization market capitalization is you could write this equation market cap equals um, number of issued shares there are two ways of measuring this okay i'm number of issued shares multiplied by market price of each share market price of each share one share okay so if a company has issued 1 lakh shares, 1 lakh shares, and the market price of each share is 50 rupees, what is the market value of the company's capital? So here we'll have 1 lakh, okay, 
this year we'll have 50 so the total value would be 50 lakh rupees that's a market value of the company's capital now i want you to understand something more some people say no no this is not the right way to measure because a lot of shares are you know held by some promoters or you know are not there in the market they are not open for trading so they should not talk about number of issued shares no they, something called freely uh, number of outstanding shares number of outstanding shares freely able available for trading freely available for trading so out of this one lakh maybe only 50,000 could be available 50 lakhs could be uh, sorry 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 sorry, sorry. only 50,000 could be available for trading because the rest could be held by the promoters they are not out in the open so the market value should be looked at that way 50 into 50 rupees per share you get 25 lakh rupees okay now how big are the some of these banks recently apple became a three trillion dollar company so one share of apple is equal to x all the shares of apple is three trillion dollars that's huge that's a lot of money isn't it yeah now um, to take it further my friends jp morgan chase and company this is the world's biggest one of the world's in fact you could say the world's biggest bank in many ways this bank uh, is run by okay i'll write here new york city it's headquartered in new york city and it's headed by jamie demon he has been there for a long long time i think 15 years now jamie demon okay jamie demon then bank of america it's headquartered in a place called charlotte which is in the american state of north carolina see all these four uh, private banks in america this is a chinese government owned bank it's a public sector bank in china hmm? public sector bank in china so this bank of america is headed by a guy called brian i think it's brian no? yeah brian moynihan brian moynihan next uh wells fargo this is a seriously large bank, San Francisco. That's where it's headquartered, San Francisco. In short, it's called SFO. San Francisco. If you want me to write in full, I hear it is. And Charles Scarf. He's a CEO. Charles Scarf. Morgan Stanley. New York City and James Gorman. James Gorman is a CEO. ICBC is not required. Industrial Credit, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China is not required because it is the government of China Bank. HDFC Bank completed its merger with Housing Development Finance Corporation on 1st July 2023. The merged entity will be the world's fourth largest bank in equity market capitalization. Okay. And um, the new CEO of the combined entity would be the current CEO of HDFC Bank, Sashidhar Jagadishan. Sashidhar Jagadishan will be the You know, CEO of the combined HDFC bank plus HDFC post merger. Okay. It's also India's biggest bank by market capitalization. India top three banks in India by market capitalization would be one HDFC bank, two uh, ICSA bank, three State Bank of India, State Bank of India which is the ninth and newest member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Hmm. 
the shanghai Co cooperation organization is headquartered you could write this in shanghai <laughs> it can't be elsewhere na shanghai it's its secretary general is chang ming secretary general chang ming of china members china russia india pakistan to repeat china russia india pakistan kazakhstan tajikistan uzbekistan and uh, what is that uh, kyrgyzstan kyrgyzstan okay so iran will be the ninth member that's about it okay the names of be afghanistan belarus and mongolia are mentioned here okay afghanistan belarus mongolia these are observers what are they observers so there are three observers out at the seo afghanistan belarus and mongolia right according to the data from the us national center for environmental protection july 3rd was the hottest day oh man it not in a particular location global average global average temperature on that day was 17.01 degrees celsius which makes it the hottest ever the previous hottest was in august um, sometime in august 2016 when the temperature touched um, you know um, 16.92 16.92 so a lot of hot things are getting heated up you could say yeah. name the company that has officially launched a new app called threads which offers a space for real time conversations online meta meta is uh, a company that owns facebook whatsapp Uh, Oculus, which is a virtual reality company, hmm? now Threads. Now Threads. Then Instagram. We will call it Insta. Okay. So, just to tell you, chalo a little more. Hmm. Meta's headquartered in Menlo Park. men these are all american companies so we will not repeatedly write america just the place the town and the state in which the town is located menlo park california california is also written as written in short as ca okay um, menlo park then its ceo is mark zuckerberg Mark Zuckerberg, Twitter, head office SFO, San Francisco. Now we don't have to write it repeatedly. We already wrote the short form a while ago, and also the full form, San Francisco. And the CEO is Linda. What's her name? Linda Yakarino. CEO. We write only CEO names. Okay. Linda Yakarino. Alphabet. It's a parent company of Google and other products. Its CEO is Sundar Pichai. Sundar Pichai. Microsoft. CEO is. Oh, I think I need to tell you the head offices, na? Chalo. Alphabet. Mountain View. In California. Sundar Pichai. 
Microsoft, Redmond, Washington State in the West Coast, Redmond Town, Washington State, uh, Satya Nadella, Satya Nadella, IBM in a place called Armonk, which is in New York State, and it's run by Arvind Krishna, Arvind Krishna. Arvind Krishna. Okay. With which country, ha with which nation has the IMF reached a um, long awaited staff level agreement to inject $3 billion standby arrangement in the, into the country's ailing economy? Pakistan, maybe we could discuss Pakistan's economy later. Um, Pakistan's Prime Minister is Shahbaj Sharif. I'll just stick to the Prime Ministers now. Iran leader actually. Iran's president is Ibrahim Rezi. Ibrahim Rezi. Iraq Prime Minister is Mohammad Shia Al Sudani. That's the Prime Minister. This is a, this is the press. Lebanon Prime Minister Najib. Mikati Syria President what's his name Bashar Al Assad Bashar Al Assad that should be fine HSBC has started its global private banking business in India to, start, to serve high net worth and ultra HNIs, entrepreneurs, professionals and their families. HSBC is based in London. Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation is one of the world's biggest banks. It's headquartered in, it's a British bank, it's headquartered in London. And um, its CEO is a guy called Noel Quinn. Noel Quinn. No, I, I think that's about it. Yeah, there's not much to discuss here. The world's sorry, India's first domestically developed 700 megawatt nuclear power reactor at the Kakra Power Atomic Power Project has commenced commercial operations. CAP is in Gujarat. So why don't we write a but about nuke power in India? Nuke power in India. Right, you could write point one. 22 nuclear reactors, you could write 22 nuclear reactors in 8 plants, in 8 plants, installed capacity 73, 80 megawatts, you could write 7500 megawatts, 7500 megawatts. Okay, the eight plants are, you could write this, um, Kakrapar, Gujarat, let me clear this, Kakrapar, sorry, not poor, Gujarat, next, Tarapur, Maharashtra, Narora, Uttar Pradesh, Rawat Bhata, some people call it Rajasthan itself, Rawat Bhata, Rajasthan, they don't use the name Rawat Bhata, so next, what is that? Uh, We mentioned this Kakapana Kudan Kulam Some place you will find double O, it's okay. Kudan Kulam plus there is one more in the what is it, Tamil Nadu. Very controversial. Kalpakkam. 
கல்பக்கம் தமிழ்நாடு தென் கேகா விச் இஸ் இன் கர்நாடகா anything else that we could be looking at i think that should be fine yeah all of almost all of come chal india's nuclear energy sector contributes to about 3% of our total energy production 3% the highest is thermal which is uses coal then is hydro and then we have uh, solar power nuclear energy wind power and other stuff hmm that's all about uh, today's class and uh, today's questions uh, at one point i forgot united nations secretariat as i said it happens but anyway have a lot of fun stay stay curious and enjoy yourself thank you for being here thank you